Hello again. In our last lecture, we introduced some of the additional notions of a cryptographic protocol. Well, today I want to talk about, you know, viewing a protocol as an abstract entity. You know, when you're building any uh, digital system, you can view it at various levels of abstraction. So you can view a high-level design or a lower-level design or an implementation. When we talk about protocols in this series of lectures, we want to view things abstractly. Okay, so recall that a protocol is an exchange of messages between two or more parties or among two or more parties. Um, and there's a temporal aspect to protocols in the following sense. We, we have a series of steps or message exchanges and uh, what happens in step two may depend on what happened in step one. And so it's like a program. Um, in general though, uh, because it's a distributed environment, the only things that a uh, principal knows are the messages that he's sent and received. And so in particular, you know, if A sends to B a message, B in general won't be expecting the message. And so the protocol has to be designed in such a way that when B receives the message, he knows what's going on and can figure out that he's at step three and say in the protocol. Okay, um, there's a lot involved in making a protocol work. And we're just gonna look at it at, at the abstract level in the sense of, you know, A sends to B a message and B sends a message back or whatever, right? But that sweeps under the rug a lot of things that, that have to be uh, done correctly to make the protocol actually work at the implementation level. But we're going to ignore those issues. But if you were to take a course, for example, in protocol implementation, you would have to worry about the following kinds of things. So, for example, what are the mechanisms of message transmission? Well, we're just viewing it as an abstract you know, passing of messages around. But what probably happens is the messages get sent via TCP IP or something like that, some lower level protocol, but we're gonna ignore that issue. How does a, how does a principal know uh, if he decrypts a message that the decryption actually succeeded? That may seem like a silly question, but if you've just de encrypted uh, an arbitrary bit string and you apply a function and you get an arbitrary bit string back, well, how do you know it's the right bit string? Well, we're going to ignore that issue. How can you uh, reliably parse a message into, into its components? So typically in these protocols, you can have structured messages with various components, some of which may be encrypted, others may not, you know, some of them may be names and that sort of thing. We'll see examples of that later on. How do you uh, take, take the message apart? Well, we won't worry about that either. Um, if a message contains the name of a principal, what's the form of that name? Well, we'll just assume that it's, it's clear what it is. Uh, and finally, how are public keys maintained and distributed? This is a very rich, rich area of concern, uh, building public key infrastructures. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later when we talk about PGP. But we're just going to assume that now that everybody has the keys that we expect them to have. Notice that these are all very important issues at the, at the level of the implementation of a protocol, but we just want to view a protocol as an abstract program as opposed to uh, a low-level thing that we're implementing on TCP IP, for example. Okay, so what are the kind of questions that we might want to ask about a protocol? Well, not those low-level questions, but here are some higher-level questions. What are the goals of the protocol? What is this protocol attempting to accomplish? And then the flip side of that is what does it actually accomplish? And are those two things, do those two sets of, uh, of desired goals overlap in some way? Or are they the same? Um, so does it achieve its stated objectives? Uh, could the protocol have been designed in a more parsimonious way? That is, did it do things that it didn't need to do? For example, did it encrypt items that could have been sent in the clear? Uh, could it have, uh, could it have uh, left out some of the message exchanges and still accomplish the same goals? And then finally, and the most sort of difficult question to answer and address is, is our protocol susceptible to attack? What does it even mean for a protocol to be attacked? Uh, what does an attack look like? What resources are available to the attacker? And we'll address that question in some detail later on. Okay, so what have we said in this lecture? 
we said uh, that we want to look at protocols abstractly and ignore a lot of the low-level issues, which are important, but are at a lower level of abstraction than we care to be involved with uh, in, this, in this series of lectures. And also that there's a standard set of questions about what are the assumptions, what are the goals, what, is a, what does a protocol actually accomplish um, that we'll want to ask of every protocol that we look at. And we'll see some examples of, of those as we go on. Thank you.